All right. You are stuck with the crappiest microphone in the world. I may as well just move this damn thing out of the way. I don't even know why I have it. You are stuck with the crappiest microphone in the world. I may as well just move this damn thing out of the way. I don't even know why I have it. All right. There we go. Now we have audio. Or audio. Which means I gotta I gotta project a little bit better towards the webcam. Hi Evan. Oh. Okay, my delay is messing me up now. Okay. Now this is gonna look really weird. Huh? All right, so we've got the chat. I'm gonna minimize the video. Um, anybody that wishes to join me on the Hangout is welcome to join me on the Hangout. Skalda, how are you, buddy? Oh, so, yes, if you wish to have an invite to the chat or the Hangout, so you can hang out with me for the next um, like an hour and a half or so, then uh, please go ahead and uh, let me know in the chat. I really want to just talk into this microphone, but for some reason that microphone's not working. So we're actually, you know what? Here, little troubleshooting. <laughs> Didn't realize you had a K40. Yes, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, the K40 I have is called Sharky. And, uh, Oh my God, this computer is trying desperately to die on me. It really is, it's giving up the fight. So I think we're gonna do a couple of things. One is I'm gonna go to my OBS and I'm gonna make myself smaller-ish. Um, we're gonna, I'll put myself down here and I will go back to my screen so I can see y'all. All right, chat, and oh, there it is, Hangout. Okay. <sighs> okay, so this could be a good time to answer uh, any questions you may have about the K40 laser um, and the stuff that you may encounter. So we are going to start with the first project that I'm going to do on video, which is the butterfly project. So. First thing we're going to do, and I will get into the K40 details shortly, but we can do this first. We want to look for a, um, let's see, license free butterfly outline. So let's try that first. And uh, like I said, if you would like to join me on the, uh, the Hangout, this is an absolutely free Hangout. Um, I will answer any questions that I can. Let's see. So we're going to go to images. We're doing the, uh, the Googlebot today because the Googlebot works. This says clipartlibrary.com free monarch. So what we're going to do is look for... Actually, it says license free, so let's see what we can find. Let's go with this one. I like this. It says free monarch butterfly outline download, free clip art, free, free clip art, clip art library. So, what we could do is if we wanted to monetize this, we'll have to, we'd have to do much more research. But for now, let's just save this image. Um, let's go to. <sighs> laser world. I don't know. We'll call it clip art. Got so many different folders in here. It's not even funny. Clip art. We'll call this butterfly one PNG. So now that we have our butterfly, I am going to go to a free program called paint 
Ryan.net. You got an Orion 40 watt laser and just need help slash information. So what we can do while paint is loading is we can pull up the Orion 40 watt laser. Uh, 2019 Ryan Motor Tech is that the one you're looking at? Ryan Motor Tech, I think that you are looking at. Yes, you are. That is the K40 laser with or with rebranded. Um, this is actually the exact model that I have, except that I have it in blue. Hello, Matt. Love to have you, buddy. So, yes, this is the exact model that I have. The only difference is the color. Um, you have red. I don't know. Do you have a, uh, a clear acrylic or polycarbonate or whatever window on that? Or do you actually have an orange window? I'm curious about that. Um, and whether or not you've actually started using it yet. So, two questions. So this is going to be easy for you, Vincenzo. Um, first off, you have a 3D printer. Um, I have 3D printed out of PLA. Where was it PLA? No, I think I did it out of PETG. Um, you need to know how to test it. The CD was dead. <laughs> don't worry about the CD, buddy. You don't need it. <laughs> and you don't want it. You can basically throw the CD away. You can throw that thumb drive away. You can pretty much throw everything away if you do things uh, that I do, like I do. The glass is orange or covered. The glass is orange or covered. So um, it's tinted orange or it's wrapped to make it look orange. Um, either way, do not look at the cut end without a camera. It's not going to protect your eyeballs, and you will end up like having issues a um, couple things uh, did I cover what did I cover in my this is just weird I'm gonna okay hold on a sec let's do this first double 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 dot YouTube dot com we're gonna go to my channel real quick before we get into the rest of the the spiel the shtick and we are going to look at uh let's see sharky okay so let me see here hold on a second so sharky 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 look it's me what a handsome feller let's see what we can do here Okay, so this is basically what I got in mind. If you haven't watched this one, that tells you pretty much all the stuff that I got with mine. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick the... All right, here we go. I talk a lot. Come on now. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, so you can see mine. I have mine open because I was acclimating it because the uh, it was cold out that day when I got it. That's the bucket. Um, three gallons of distilled water, one gallon of uh, RV slash marine grade antifreeze. Um, that's what I used for my combination. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I do run the pump. Uh, but I always, if I turn the pump off, because I don't have a backflow preventer in mine yet. So when I shut mine off, it drains off some of that, the coolant. So what I ended up having to do is I have to burp the system every time I turn the pump back on. Um, if I'm going to be running multiple jobs in a day and I have to leave for whatever reason, I leave the pump running. So, so far now the water pump works, the blower works, but if I hit the test laser, nothing happens. And if I turn the current dial, nothing. Oh, crappy doodle. First off, do you smell ozone? That would be a the number one thing I would ask. Uh, 
Um, let me see here. Sorry, we're trying to we're trying to troubleshoot you and this at the same time. Okay, so right here where my mouse is in that area where my kind of where my finger is over to this side, there's a ground wire. No smell. No arky, no sparky. Okay, well, not necessarily a deal breaker, but um, have you, okay, first off, have you looked at the laser tube? Is there any air in it at all? Because there's a, the easiest way I found to burp the laser tube is to tilt the machine um, toward, so basically the left side of the machine is I'll tittle it up about probably four to six inches. And then I pinch the supply line from the pump, the short, the little, the short tube um, next to the, uh, the, yeah, the laser tube. And then I hold it for a second while it's pumping. And then while it's tilted, I let go. And typically, when I, I'll lean it to the left and then I'll lean it to the right again. And then that bubble travels up through. And uh, then I have to do kind of the same procedure again, because then towards the end of the laser where the focusing lens is, that air bubble gets trapped there again. And then I just kind of have to pinch the line, wait for a second, tilt it up a little bit, let go. And then it typically burp, it burps the entire system till there's no air. Because the number one thing you want to make sure with these cheap lasers is that there is no air in your tube because that could fizzle fry everything. And hello, Robbie, Robbie back. It's a very, very good to see you, sir. So, yes. Um, the other thing, there's a small thing you could do here, which is the ground strap. You can uh, kind of take a grinder and burr off that a little bit of that uh, powder coating <coughs> to get a better uh, seal, better connection to your ground. Um, I have a three pin um, system and the building I have is a three pin system. So that means that I do have a direct to ground um, or earth uh, ground on the outside of the building. Mr. Ray and Butram, how are you today, sir? Secret Handshake Part 2. <laughs> so that is the first part. Okay. You haven't even turned the machine on yet at this point, by the way. Um, all of that stuff needs to be done with the machine off. You don't need, I highly recommend that you do not run your water pump off the machine power. Um, it's much better to just run it straight to an outlet or straight to a power strip or whatever you want to do but anything is better than running it to the actual machine bad idea don't do that um i know that it's ideal but the thing is is you're turning off the pump when you turn off the machine you don't want to do that because if you don't have it set up where it has a backflow or a check valve installed all that water from the tubes can go Bleh, and then you're going to have water go boop and then you're gonna have to reburp it every single time, which is what I have to do. But again, I haven't fired the laser in like five days so far because I've been busy. Um, I can show you two of the projects that I have done with my K40 laser, if you are interested, which means I'll have to go back to my other expanded view of myself. Um, so if you're interested in getting into lasers, I Highly recommend it. And again, if you would like to be a part of the Hangout, you are most welcome. I can send you the link. Um, just ask, and we can make that happen. So the first project I did on the K40 was this. Well, it's not the first project, but this is the first like marketable project, one that I'm actually selling. And then uh, the second one I did is this one so these are available on etsy and on my local marketplace and they can be customized as well okay so that's enough of that let me shrink me back down again to 
a more manageable size. And let me find you guys again because my screen is not big enough for everything I want to do. All right, where are we? Can Ryan be part of the Hangout? Yes, Ryan can be part of the Hangout. But Ryan doesn't always want to be part of the Hangout. Sometimes he likes to just lurk. So that is completely up to Ryan. If Ryan would like to do so, then Ryan can do so. Sorry, I'm trying to find my other window. Yes, this window. Um, way too many windows, dude. I'm telling you. Copy, copy, copy. And. Link. Vince, you are also welcome if you need to. I just, uh, all right. So I think we got everything taken care of. All right, so let's see. Is there anything else helpful? Vince, are you still in there? Um, again, here's your, your meter so you can tell how much power you're using. Um, you don't want this to go above 15% for very long. Um, it supposedly shortens the life of the laser tube, so don't do that. Um, let's see what else. Um, as you can see, this is what I was talking about. This is a PETG... Um, air assist nozzle the air assist nozzle is extremely important okay that clears the debris away from you and blows it kind of towards the the duct in the back there that white thing um so yeah that's kind of important i got a cheap harbor freight uh like compressor it's like a for air um uh, airbrushing and stuff and it actually works really good and it's rated at 50 psi so and that there you have that all right um and it, 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 it. let's see yep there's the laser all right there's the laser when i got my first one this part right here was cracked okay there was a tiny little crack on the inside of this um and I, I don't know whether it was from me or whether it was from shipping, but it was on the inside. So when I filled the tube with water, it actually went into the CO2 chamber, which uh, if you can barely see it right here, there's the outer glass, there's the inner glass, and then there's the CO2 laser tube. The crack was back here where the, that tube is supposed to be sealed for the laser because it's filled with CO2. Um, I had to dump out my circulation water because I ended up with what looked like uh, glitter because it the water was going through that tube and it would, should not have been. So there was no CO2. So when I fired my laser for the first time, all I could smell was ozone, which is bad. I'm sitting in my cubicle at work, so I can't actually talk. Hashtag keyboard warrior. Yes. Just hold up note cards. Yeah, I think his, his co-workers would be like poking around the door going, dude, what are you doing with the note cards? Although he has done sort of like that, not with note cards in the past, and it has been amusing. Um, supposedly, you can take gator clips um, on each side of these terminals after you pull the boot off and you can get to the wiring. And what you can do is when you test fire it, see if the if there's an arc between that that way you know that there's power certainly i think that sounds silly but whatever <coughs> when you test fire you can look in the laser itself and see if there is a glow because this the co2 laser will glow kind of a like a purplish color when you're when you fire it so what you could do is, I don't recommend holding it down for too long, but hold it down for like a second or two, and then you should be able to tell if this lights up or not. 
And if it doesn't, then the diagnostics are fairly straightforward. It's going to be either your tube is bad or it's going to be an issue with your power supply, which then you can just do your voltage and check your, you know, use a voltmeter and figure out what's going on with that. So anyway, there you go. Um, hopefully that helps Vince. Uh, like I said, this is Sharky, the laser. So I wasn't sure if it would only power the laser if attached to computer. I just noticed the current gauge wouldn't move when adjusting. No. Okay. Well, first the uh, right here, <clears throat> when you adjust this knob, unless the laser is firing, this will not move at all. Um, the only time the computer will recognize the laser is if this power is turned on. Um, but just make sure that this is turned off. Um, that will allow you to set up in uh, K40 Whisperer, which is the program I recommend rather than the one it comes with. Um, <clears throat> this knob... I have it so I can kind of, I've been turning up gradually. It does not match this completely. So you want to keep an eye on that. You don't want your, you don't want to go above 15. So that's pretty much what it is. Um, can it go over 15? Yes. Um, supposedly it, it burns it out quicker. So um, the other thing is I recommend if you haven't done it yet, fix the wiring on this fan because um, if you haven't seen it, <clears throat> look, it's me again, um, right in here. You see this, this is like, I'm going to pause it right there. You see where that bare wire is? I basically, I slid this back and the first time I had this, the wire just popped right out. Hey buddy. So this needs to be at least at a minimum retwisted, rewrapped to be safe. It's not safe the way they come. Um, I, I soldered mine to make that joint a little better. It doesn't take long. It only takes about 10 minutes. Um, I did it on this video here. So you can certainly look at that if you wish. Okay, so anyway, back to this. We were looking at butterflies. So let's go to here. If you have any more questions in regards to um, what we were just talking about. I'm not done. I'm just going to try and get to what the video is going to be about today. Um, what can I do for you, Bug? All right. Do you say hi? Hi. Hi. So what I'm going to do is Why did I do it that way? Okay, anyway. I'm doing things and I don't know what I'm doing, so But that's all right. We need to <sighs> Look at this in centimeters. What are you doing? I need my ruler. Actually, I don't need my ruler. I need my notepad. Where's my notepad? Allow me to grab my notepad. I, I just it's around the corner. So. Okay. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't far away. I just had to go get it. So the project that I'm doing right now is kind of this. It doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, but this is what I'm working on. And it's the idea for it. So the ruler, so I could kind of get them ballpark. So I'm at a hundred and okay, so I'm at 17 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So 17 by 12 is my rough dimensions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this, go to edit. 
image, resize, canvas, and we'll do what I say it was. We'll call it 18 by 18 by 13. So our width is 18. Oh my god. Okay. Width is 18. It's a 13. <clears throat> yeah, 19 by 13. That's cool. And we are going to make this bigger-ish. Probably should have done that first. But that's all right. So we're just going to kind of grab this little bugger. And we're going to go like these. And we're going to make it bigger. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll get it somewhat centered. All right, so what else we got? I can talk about the laser while I'm doing this. I'm just wanting to uh, work on this as well since I have limited time off from my new job. You know, it's a good opportunity to hang out with you guys too. That way I can uh, get caught up. I enjoy doing the earlier videos and I'm trying to get this done quickly enough so you guys get to see the rest of the process but it's going to be a tricky scenario so we'll see yes I am working at an airport I do uh, refueling and whatnot of planes oh that's neat i like that let's delete it oh yeah ho, 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 ho. all right so we got our image up there now for the tricky chicky part i need to copy this so control a actually you know what let's do it like this Select, oh, really? Come on. Hmm. All right, that's a little better. Should probably use a, uh, eh, let's open that up a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, we use uh, <clears throat> Jet A. So, good times, good times. All right, so let's go back to this. Let's go bump our tolerance up because honestly, on this one, there we go. Now I got enough of it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this. I'll make a new layer. I'm going to turn this one off. There we go. I'm going to escape. I'm going to paste this. There we go. And what we're going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to take this. It does. It actually smells a whole lot like kerosene. All right, so maybe I'm going to come over a little bit more. There we go. I like that. I'm going to delete that. And then we're going to just kind of drag and select 
this. And we're going to delete that. And we got to go in here. And we're going to patch this up. <coughs> What are you doing? We got black selected. What is that out of? Oh. What is that from? Is that your swingy chuck thingy? Your finger chucks? Yep. All right. No. I don't even have those anymore. Okay. I wish I did. No, you don't. You really don't. Why? I don't know. Just because it sounds good. <clears throat> All right. So we're on this layer. So what we're going to do now, go back through. We're going to highlight this. We're going to copy it. Open up a new layer. Turn this layer off. Paste this. Yay! Look at that. And what I'm going to do now is image. And I'm going to flip horizontal so now I have <clears throat> two wings that I can work with even though I could technically do this the other way hello Michael Fox how are you all right so now I should have okay that did not work at all the way I had envisioned it to work. Okay, hold on a second. Let's control A. <clears throat> Image. <sighs> really? Oh, that's so annoying. All right, let's try this a different way. Bloop. I guess it doesn't really matter to be fair. I guess I could do it. Uh, we're going to save this as Butterfly One. We'll save it as a BMP. Why not? Call it Butterfly One Left Wing. Done. There we go. And then we'll go to flip horizontal. We'll save this as <clears throat> right wing. Spell correctly, that would be awesome. Oh, and I saved that wrong. Look at that. I'm going to say that as a BMP. My apologies if my children get loud, but yeah, they, are, they are home, so. Yep. And we have one more piece to do. Control Z. Because <clears throat> we need the body. The body. Looking for a stream, and Robbie Mac said you were live, so here I am. Well, indeed, I am. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah. Yep, we're uh, kind of, we've been talking about the K40 a little bit, but Vince has uh, stopped asking me questions, so now I'm working on preparing a job for the K40. Um, some of the stuff is much more simple than others. Um, if you're just going to cut something out of, like, paper, cardboard, wood, or Lexan, acrylic, whatever, then... Uh, this is this is, I'm going way overboard but if you're gonna do something like I'm doing right now then it's a little bit more complicated so <clears throat> yes so we're gonna pop open let's see I really really want to make this uh... <clears throat> Oh, 
That was a midway brain fart. I'm just kind of <laughs> trying to. <laughs> nice. All right, so we're going to open up the background again. We'll take a look at that. I think this layer, <clears throat> I'm going to select, and I'm going to recolor that red. I'm going to deselect. If I can get on the right screen, we'll reselect this one. I'm going to color that red for a second. Bloop. There we go. It'll give me a, kind of a rough idea of what I'm looking at. And then I'm going to select this. I think I'm going to... Make a copy of this. That way, if I mess it up, I can delete it. So we're going to turn the background off so I don't have to look at that. We're going to turn this one off so I don't have to look at that. And then I'm going to start hacking away at this thing. Building a spool rewinder, so I thought I would learn while I work. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, spool rewinders are actually really, really useful. Especially if you can get them to like pull out the... Uh, the kinks okay so we are going to go in here and we are going to zoomy zoomy and then i'm going to just kind of pull out some of these and it doesn't have to be extremely pretty thankfully because i'm using a trackball style mouse so i have like almost no control over my mouse whatsoever so if i can do this and you have a standard mouse then you probably are going to do a much better job at this than i am as i said i mean honestly all i got to do is get it sort of there i don't really have to go like nuts with it but <clears throat> That was close enough. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. Here. I have white. I have white. No, you don't. You my shirt. Love this. We start all over again. So, I can see where people are. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Let's pick one. <sighs> oh, you're so cute. Okay. <laughs> All right, there's our body. Okay. Tell me. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Need some coffee? Hmm. All right. So we now have. I want. I got a point. Wait. This and this. So basically, this is my base. Oh, that's cool. I haven't been able to watch a lot of videos lately. I've been, I've been busy doing that work thing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to yeah, save this God. as the body. And we're going to go with the BMP again. So we're going to call this Butterfly One ah, Space Body. Now we have, other than loud children, we have our 
our stuff. So now I can close this. This is the image we went with. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Inkscape. Once I'm done with Inkscape, I will show you K40 Whisper if you're interested. Um, it's 1028 now, so I have just under an hour left. So I'm going to try and make this quick. Vince, do you need any other information? That phone ringing. And I still got to figure out what's going on with my microphone because that really drives me nuts. Um, when you open a image in K40 or uh, an Inkscape, it uh, my children. It'll open up a new occurrence of uh, Inkscape. And so I think the first one, we only have to cut one of these wings and we can actually, it doesn't matter if we invert it because once we, cut, unless it depends on the stuff we're using. In my case, I have to actually print a left wing and a right wing. <clears throat> so what we'll do is just, we're going with the stock settings and we had to bring it back over here because it ran off on me. Um, we're going to shrink this down. And we are going to view the document properties. I want to see how big this is first. So we are reading in pixels, which you cannot read in pixels when you're exporting jobs to K40 Whisper. It has to be in millimeters. So I typically set, I change both. So you change your custom size to millimeters and you change your display units to millimeters. Once you do that, you'll be fine. But now you can see that this is set up at 491 millimeters, which is way bigger than we need it to be. So I'm gonna change this to the, I think it was 180. Ugh. So we'll change that to 180. And we'll change this to 130. So that should be sufficient. And then what we could do is, uh, looks like they get a little bit of something. I got some schmutz there. That's not good. So I may have to remove that. I don't know yet. Oh, no, it's just part of the background. Now, the only downside to doing this is that now I'm going to have to make sure that every, everything lines up properly and that the measurements are the same. Which, with this, the wing, it's not a big deal. What are you doing? All right, so we got that. Um, although I do have to figure out one other component to this. Which we're going to figure out here in a minute. Would you guys stop? Hey, stop. I don't mind you guys playing, but you guys are being kind of obnoxious now. Which hand did you pick? Oh, okay, you're Hmm. My favorite hand is actually this one. <clears throat> All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull open Evan. Evan, calm down, please. Evan. Evan. Hold 
on a second. You heard me. Okay. Ah, let's try this. Now. All right. So this is a K40 Whisper. Um, if you ever forget which steps you're on, um, raster engrave is the uh, is black. So basically, on this particular image here. Raster engrave is going to do line by line like this all the way across until it gets to the very bottom and then poof, it's done. So it does it faster and you don't need a huge amount of power, but depending on the material you're using, you may have to change it a little bit. I tend to use probably less like right around five, I think is my setting three to five, depending on what I'm, what I'm cutting or what I'm engraving. So this would be like your engraving setting. Um, if I switch this color to black or to red, red basically would cut all of this. So that's what that would do. Um, blue is the vector, I think vector engrave. Um, and that would burn lines. So it basically trace, like make a line drawing around it. Instead of, so it wouldn't be going back and forth, it would just go me, and then you'd have a line. So, those are the three different settings you have in K40 Whisper. <clears throat> um, to change your colors, you just go in here and you're looking for, I guess that's what you're looking for. <laughs> you are odd. Thank you. We cleaning, right? Yeah, there it is. All right, so what you want to do now is you go into fill and stroke, and then uh, this little dialog box is going to pop up here, and you want to go to stroke. <laughs> okay, what? What? Okay, I'm having, well, that's bizarre. Why is that not doing what I want it to do? <clears throat> Paint is undefined. Ah, okay, so you got to go to flat color. Okay, there we go. Oh, that freaked me out. Um, so once you bring up a flat color, if you want this to, like I said, to raster engrave, then it's just going to just leave it black and it'll do that. Um, but if I wanted it to do, like to cut it out, I would go up here and I would go two, five, five. And then what it should do, which it did not do. Hmm. I have a lot to learn about this program because that did not work. I'm very bummed. Yeah, this should be red right now, but it's not red. Why are you not red? Aha, that's kind of cool. I don't know what I just did, but that's neat. <clears throat> Oh, that is very interesting and cool at the same time. Woo, we didn't want that. Okay, so yeah, I'm learning some new stuff. That's cool. I love learning new stuff. Actually, here, we'll use this. Why are you doing black? 
you should be doing red, not black. There we go. And again, you're doing black. Why are you doing black? Weird. <laughs> Looking green. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that welcome to that's just my uh that's my way of speaking, I think. <clears throat> that's all right though. You know what I meant. All right, so we're gonna try to close this in just a tiny bit more because I want to make sure that uh there we go I want to fill that fill this is so weird Uh, let's go back to the. Uh, okay, so maybe I'd be best just zooming it in and doing this. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, way of doing things, I think. Probably, there's probably better ways to do this. At least I hope there is, because holy cow. This would take like 10 years to do one image, but I suppose it's also okay. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a default. <clears throat> My apologies that my phone keeps ringing. All right, give me one second. That's how they get you. They start calling you from a local number, so you answer. Punks. All right, let's see. Where are we at here in progress? We Okay, so this is our wing. Okay, so this part here, we need to switch that into red. And this is what we did last time when we got into trouble. Hmm. And I am sure there is much easier ways to do this, um, but I'm not an expert with Inkscape or really anything to be fair. So I'm just kind of winging it. Yeah, voicemail, I know, right? Oh, it's just, it's just crappy. I mean, the, the, People can just get your information and sell it to like everybody and their cousin. And I mean, it, it seems like most of the companies that like call you are like, they don't even care if you actually answer. They just, they get credit for like calling you. I, I, I'm, that's just what it seems like. All right, or pencil again.
Fly in the butter. <laughs> yeah. My my children love to sing and just be nuts, which I think is great. But they need to be cleaning because they're on vacation and they have a friend that's coming over. So their playtime messes that they leave in the living room have to be cleaned before their friend comes over. Otherwise, their friend does not come over. So I'm, a, I'm an evil parent. Then they sell your number to marketers as a valid number to call. Yep, exactly. And it is crap. I don't even think it should be legal, but you know what? It's a, I don't know. <clears throat> it is. Sort of, I think. I know that they are coming up with ways to mitigate that. I guess uh, Samsung actually is developing something for their phones for that. If, if I heard that right. I mean, I'd probably thicken that line a little bit. It would probably take less time to do this. All right, so is this even like somewhat interesting in terms of what I'm doing or? Just kind of a something to watch and pass the time. Let me know. I'm curious. I know I tend to get into like some really. I do. I do somewhat boring content a lot because honestly, I'm just not that interesting of a person. But. And at some point, I will actually be doing this procedure, um, as you can see, because uh, what it's going to do is it's actually going to uh, pull the uh, lines that I need out. So this actually gives it a much finer cut line or raster line. It'll make it much more visually interesting as well. So, but I have to get the uh, kind of like that. Yeah. Not so much. Okay, now that I can get like, I think I can enjoy that. Oh man, I got another spot I gotta get. Yeah, they keep finding these little spots. Which I guess is fine, but it's a butterfly, so I don't think you wanna have open areas like this. Oh, I think I found a tool I really like. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, I like this tool. Wait, what? Oh, maybe I don't like this tool after all. I thought I was really going to get behind that tool. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's right. If you think you will fail, you will succeed. I uh, often think I'm going to fail at stuff. But, you know, I'm just very pessimistic about things, I think, most of the time. I try to be optimistic. I mean, I have a very optimistic outlook on things. All right, let's see if we can't get to... Uh, that looks really, really neat, I think. I think that would print horribly. Uh, it might print interesting on the laser, but still, it's like... It's a... Uh, Um, what I'm trying to do is get this so I can uh, get a fairly narrow line because this particular one, I don't need all the stuff in the middle. Um, so I guess I, I guess I am wasting a lot of time doing this. Um, what I really need to do is just cut out the portions, so like the circles and stuff. So I was kind of hoping that if I did it like this and filled it, then you see how it's now it's fixing those lines a little bit. So I'm trying to go through and the areas that this is where it comes in really handy to use like a solid, just a solid black image instead of uh, that. And I don't know what I'm doing. So that's probably part of the other problem. I don't know, is there like a eraser? Fill the stroke. Take from selection. Hmm. Well, let's see what this does. Doesn't seem to have done anything. Hmm. It is, it's erasing that one path over there. Uh, okay, yeah, if it's vector, you should be able to break it apart and select just the shapes you want to keep. Hmm. Uh... Yeah, see, that's where I got to learn how to do all this because I have no idea how to do that. So I'm basically just sitting here spinning my tires in the dirt because I don't know how to do that. Which I guess this isn't like a horrible thing. Tweak objects by sculpting or painting. What does this do? Me. No idea. Me. <clears throat> hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, what are you talking about? The BMP file? You talking about this one right here? Oh, goodness gracious. It was SVG or something. Oh, well. I suppose we could do that too. I think the other thing. Open. Oh, yeah, I can open reset. Open. Do, 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 do. That one. I, in theory, I should be able to. Uh, No, too much. Turn that down a little bit. Which I think I did too good a job on that. I did. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out a skinny skinny line for this um this is what i'm trying to do sampling layer because uh i mean i can do this well that's very interesting it didn't fill all of it Hmm. That's where my problem was. I didn't even notice that. I guess I should have. Let's try this. There we go. Oh yeah, that's gonna work much better. We'll do 100% on that. I just realized what I messed up on. Let's save this as. Yeah, I'll just save it as BMP. Yes. Okay, flatten. <clears throat> All right. Ah, I wonder how this is going to handle. So let's uh, let's throw all this out because it matters not. Wow, I've got so much stuff open on that window now. <clears throat> Does look a lot better. Now, let's see if when we do this. Done. That's all I had to do was fix that. That one thing. Ta da! So now it's going to go through and it's going to cut all this out on the red line segments, I should say. So this area here might be problematic, but it might be all right. So now...
we need to edit. Hmm. Her. Her. I was going to make my canvas a little smaller. And thank you, sir. Thank you very much. See, I like to do things on my own, too, you know. But I always appreciate your help, so. But what I'd like to do is select this, C, B, and then I would like to flip this this way. And then I have that ready to go. These two I should be able to print. Print. I said print. Cut. Cut together. But look at this. Look, it, it didn't grab all of it. <clears throat> it actually skipped some of it. That's interesting. Hmm. Why is that? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <coughs> I'm going to be honest, I actually like this missing that section better anyway. That is actually kind of cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. And we're going to go like this. So now we have these two pieces that we can print together. And this one we are going to move over here. And then all I got to do is <clears throat> open the body. Let's open the body. There's no detail at all on the body. So, but I need to get a rough idea of height. So let's move that out of the way. Um, Zero. Oh, this is, I hate this. <sighs> All right, so I gotta go back and document properties again. Millimeters, millimeters. We are and we're gonna change this to 180. Height is going to be 130. No, that's all right. I'm just going to rescale these as well. So, see if we can do them together. Oh, look, we can. Let me make them a little bigger. All right, let's move these down here. All right, there we go. Perfect. Now what I need to do is I need to do the same thing on this. So we need this to be no taller than 180. So let's go to document properties again. And sometimes it saves it and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why, but so we want the height on this to be 180. And the rest of it really doesn't matter. So we're gonna close that. And we're gonna go here. And I think actually that looks fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this, copy it, and we're gonna bring it into our other job, which is right here. We're gonna paste this in place. And of course that didn't work. So we'll have to shrink it. 
Then we're going to make this on a new layer. Where's my layers? Make a layer. Add. Move this to layer. Bada bing. Make another layer. And layer two is going to be this stuff. So we'll put this on layer two. And then we'll make one more layer. <clears throat> and we'll move this to layer three. Move. Okay. There we go. And hopefully this is going to coordinate things just a little bit better. So what we need is to make these bigger. Not big enough yet. And I think, I think that looks like it's about the right size. So now we're going to go in here. And we're going to go flip. Because we need to cut that out. And then bloop, bloop. Oh my goodness, for goodness sakes. Amount to grow positive or shrink negative, create fill path. Okay, let's go way up to here and just do this. That didn't work either. Oh, wow, that did work. Yowza. Z. Let's do like two millimeter and try that. That's a little better. Ugh. Again, it really pays to do this correctly the first time. So perhaps I should go back into here. And open the body. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? Let's highlight. Okay, we gotta bump our tolerance down a little bit, I guess. All right, let's delete all that. What is that garbage there? All right. And grab our lasso. We're gonna add whatever this little bugger is here. All right, I hope that's right. All right, that looks right. So we're gonna slow up. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Image. Invert selection. There we go. Fill. Red. All right, now we're good. Oh. Tell you what, and we're going to save this as Butterfly Body. Yes, 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 save it. Okay. Then we're going to go back into Inkscape. We're going to delete layer one, but all right, we'll delete layer one. Delete. There, there we go. And we are going to close our other window. Close without saving. And I'm gonna reopen this. Edit document properties. 
millimeters. Done. So you'll just do this, control C. Uh, new layer. Sure. Control V. Ooh, that's big. Look how big that thing is. Where, where did I? Oh, there you are. It's like, where did it go? It, like, disappeared on me. And that is definitely too big, so we can make it smaller. I'm going to move layer four to the back so I can see this. Mm, I don't know. I think I can make it a little bigger than that. Let's do that. A little bit more. I think that will do just fine. Now we just gotta fix it. Bloop. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, man. Hey what? And this is just part one. I've still got one other thing I gotta do too, which is gonna be much more interesting than this because I've got to do a, just a solid outline of the wings themselves. Um, so I'm going to have to look at that next. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this as, actually we're not going to save this as, because I need to move things first. So we're going to move these pieces. There. And then we're going to save it. Save as Butterfly 1. SVG. Save. So now when we open up K40 Whisper, it should actually open this. So what you can do is open a design file. Um, find the folder that it's in. Holy cow. This program is a little slow too, by the way, just so you know. Especially if you have a whole lot of things. D. All right, now we're going to see how long this takes for it to actually pull it into here. Well, that's new. I've never seen that error. Inkscape not found. What does that mean? SVG load failed. Inkscape not found. Huh. Well, there you go. Inkscape not found. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and troubleshoot that today. Because that is weird. Thank you. 
Huh. Okay, so it wasn't directed to the uh, Inkscape EXE file. Apparently, uh, K40 Whisper requires that. So. That looks really nice, though. Look at that. <clears throat> so now we can uh, view settings, general settings, um, laser area width. Let's increase that to 500 millimeters. And we'll go to, I think we'll leave it to 220 millimeters. Interesting that it's not, why is it showing outside of the working area though? Huh. Hmm. Not, not liking that. Because now he's gone. <laughs> all right so we've got a couple little little twe tweaky things that i've got to work on apparently not exactly sure why this oh okay i see what happened Okay, so what I need to do is actually go in here, page properties, and I need to adjust this. So I need to adjust this to about, let's just call it like 200. By, I don't know, 300. No, actually, we don't want that. We want this to be. Let's just call it 200 by 200 and see what happens. And it's not quite big enough yet. So we'll go to 250. All right, that should be good enough. And then what we can do is we can center our. I didn't realize that this is basically like our bounding box. So, oops. Control Z. Let's go to and we're gonna move all this up here. Oh, let's move that over there. Let's get rid of this. Now it'll exist within the printing area. This box doesn't matter how big it is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in. I'm going to save this as, and I want to save it as the exact same file, save, replace it. And then when you go back into uh, K40 Whisper, I could just go reload design file and it'll take a second, but when you reload the design file, it'll reload the file. So if you resaved it, it's going to basically load it as the current or revised settings. So, oh my God. All right. So, tomorrow, if you want to tune in, I'm going to actually be doing laser work on this. So, I'm actually going to um, live stream the laser running and 
Uh, so if you're interested in watching that, then I welcome you. I, um, I think I could probably do that as a hangout again. So if you're interested in that, we will do so tomorrow. Um, but as you can see, you know, after going through a whole bunch of learning curves, I've only had my laser for a week. So I've literally only used Inkscape uh, one time prior to getting the laser. And in the last five days, I've been trying to figure out how to use the laser or last week or whatever. So I'm learning. So you get to see me learning. And this is the effect of what we're looking for. So this is all going to be cut, okay? Cut. No detail work whatsoever in this. Um, if I wanted detail work, I would have to go down and use the raster engrave, which I don't need for this. This can be very simple. It's just an outline, so this would go very quickly, unless I was doing it on, like, uh, 6 mil, um, like, particle board or something like that. This is getting done on <clears throat> um, cardboard. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I will be doing another trace out of the design because I need these wings to be solid for one of these pieces. And I need the other two to be exactly like this. So yeah, anyway, so any other questions on what's going on? Um, I have not given up 3D printing, just so you know. I actually plan on uh, incorporating laser and 3D printing as well. Um, matter of fact, I got a couple of jobs I still need to get done 3D print-wise. And it's just I've been trying to focus on learning how to market the laser a little bit better. Because this is a really good value add for me. So hopefully between 3D printing and laser work, at some point I'll be able to roll out and do that on my own. So, yes, laser your prints. So I guess if you guys got nothing else since you're so quiet, I'm going to get off here and, uh, yeah. And that's pretty much the extent of it. So uh, it has been, well, I'll wait. Do you have anything else you want to add? You have five minutes. Going once. Going twice. <clears throat> Don't do the big bang in the middle. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, I don't know where my window is here. Oh, there it is. Let's see, what's my delay? There it is. We'll pop this up over here. Four plus four. Oh, good. Good job. Um, anyway, yeah, I thank you guys for, uh, being here and hanging out. And, uh, I gotta work on getting my... Um, <laughs> microphone fixed. I don't know what's going on with it because it was working fine and now it's not. So that is slightly annoying. More than, well, actually, it's more than slightly. It's really, really annoying to me. I had something I wanted to add. Yes, you did a good job. I'm off tomorrow. So I'll be watching and I'll probably set up the laser to look at things. Yes, um, big thing before I go. Um, Resist the urge to just power on the laser unless you have verified the primary thing, which is your fluid. That's the big thing. Um, second is uh, throw in a, a piece of cardboard underneath your uh, your laser end there and give you something to burn. Um, three, there's a hole underneath relatively close to the home position of that laser when you're printing with the vise or the, the little jig. Um, so you may want to put a piece of cardboard underneath the frame just so if it does burn, it's not going to be burning your table. 
when you're testing. Um, what else? Mm, recirculate, make sure your water is coolish. You don't want it hot. Um, don't test fire your laser over five. Try to keep it down low. Five is probably the best you're going to get. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to add to that. Honestly, it's it's a very, very robust little unit. Um, like I said, my laser didn't work on my first one. Um, if you are interested, there are upgrades to your laser tube that you can get. Um, you can actually boost the performance of your laser significantly through a couple of different things. Um, I recommend if you haven't done so already, join the K40 Laser Group on Facebook. Um, I can show you that real quick. I'm going to move this tab over here in case there's some really inappropriate things that I don't want you to see. So give me one second. Well, it's not that I don't want you to see it. It's just that, well, other people don't need to see it. There we go. The cave, it's the Chinese K40 Laser Group. I think, of which I am a member, and I do participate in discussions. So there is that. Um, I think this is the one I'm active in. Ugh. <clears throat> It's so hard. Hold on a sec. I'm looking. I'm looking. I am part of the Chinese K40 Laser Group, yes, on Facebook. That is the one that I use primarily. Um, so, yes. So, if you want to be in that group, you've got to apply, and they will let you in, and it'll be all fun and love and chicken grease. Or something like that. So, um, other than that, I'm gonna cut a mirror for my first cut. Um, I haven't tried that yet, so I'll get back to you on to how well that works for me. Uh, hashtag all the porn. Yes, yes, because I have two small children, and I must have tons of it on my computer by now. Um. So yeah, um, I'm gonna keep posting the uh, laser videos as I go. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, do small projects here and there. Uh, yeah, I I've had been having a lot of fun with the laser. So yeah, Vince, um, message me on Twitter or um, Facebook if you need to. If you're having an issue with something, I'm not an expert. Okay, but. So far, I seem to be on the right track with stuff in terms of uh, troubleshooting things. So, at least that's what's been going in the group. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And hopefully you, I don't know, hopefully you learned something at least a little bit while I was doing this. And uh if you have not done so, do not forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell. I hate saying that stuff because I really, honestly, I feel disingenuous when I say stuff like that because I don't care. Um, yeah, if you're interested in finding me, though, so the bell is your best bet because I stream at no particular interval or time frame, which I know drives some people nuts. but. I basically stream when I have something to stream about, or I hang out with Mike over at Wiley's 3D, so we can always look him up, and I do pop in there every once in a while. Not as much as I used to, because I have just been busy, which he was laughing and saying, how can you be so busy when you're unemployed? 
Well, now I'm not. So now I'm actually really busy. Um, but I will be in the lab all day tomorrow, which means I will be doing some uh, streaming. So we will do some more. And I may do another video while I'm there as well. That way I'm going to call them pocket videos because they're less than 10 minutes long. So you guys have a great day. And hopefully uh, you have an awesome day. And we'll see you later. So peace.